Hey, I'm Bill DeVille, and I'm here with Nels Klein, guitarist for the band Wilco. Nice to see you, Nels. Greetings, Bill. Nice to see you as well. How was your summer? Did you have a good summer? Uh, summer was so far is pretty tour-centric. Uh, yeah. It didn't start that way. It started pretty uh, chill and relaxed, and then uh, we just got back, uh, Wilco, from the five-week tour of Europe and the United Kingdom. And how did this tour go? Was it excellent? Did it go well for you? It went very well, thanks. Uh, it was very warm at many of the junctures, <laughs> like super hot and humid, uh, especially Spain and Italy. Everything is uncharacteristically warm at this point, I think. But musically, uh, interpersonally, and in terms of various uh, brushes with cuisine, it was really great. Do you have any advice for young young folks and bands about how to keep doing it? I'm definitely somebody who's never wanted to do anything but play music, but uh, I don't get tired of it, so I think I'm weird. Uh, I don't. I like touring, even even though I miss my wife and you know my home life, uh, and so it's all about sound for me. And as soon as the sound cranks up. Uh, I'm in my element, I guess. Uh, so if that's how you feel about music and sound, you'll probably be okay. Uh, if you're going into it for other reasons, like uh, fame and fortune, um, maybe you ought to think of something else, like being there a you go. influencer or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's get right into it. There's a new album called Cousin, which is set for release on September 29th. And how would you describe the Cousin album? Well, I mean, it's, uh, oh man, well, to me, in a way, it's like a lot of Wilco records in that it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's got some rocking kind of pop elements and it's got some dark moody elements. It has some instrumental textures that are maybe unexpected and it also has some pretty classic Jeff Tweedy songwriting. Uh, it does sound a little different. Uh, I think that's uh, because of the participation of Kate LeBon in the project and ideas that she had. Uh, about just really instrumental sounds, uh, not so much the song structures, although uh, a couple of them changed a little bit and structurally speaking. Uh, and I think that uh, there's some interesting reverbs <laughs> on this yeah. record that I, I pretty much can credit uh, Kate with adding to the Tom Schick uh palette sonic palette because tom chick was still recording we still did it in the loft uh you know he had co-produced the stuff uh the last few things with jeff he's our engineer uh wonder and uh and so it just sounds a little different um and i think that songwriting wise it's it's a strong record and it's uh got some instrumental stuff uh here and there little bits like well i mean purely instrumental but very instrumental centric kind of pieces well, you guys haven't uh, enlisted outside producers very much, you know, in uh, the 20 plus years, almost 30 years that Wilco's been a band. You for almost 20 now, right? That's so right. So what did Kate bring to the table then? Well, I, I think that she, uh, well, apparently she grew up hearing a lot of Wilco because her father's a big Wilco fan. So I think she came in uh, knowing which songs we were uh, going to address because mm -hmm. a lot of the songs had... Uh, been around around the same time as the cruel country songs so that basically is saying that there are really a lot of songs but jeff is yeah. writing a lot of material and kind of is all the time now uh for years i guess but really started to write a lot of stuff during the lockdown um very very prolific and uh so i think that she was able to hear what we had worked on some of these songs we had been recording and demoing and uh, and we reapproached them uh, once Jeff asked us, like, hey, how about Kate LeBond coming in? And we all said, great. Um, and so I think that hearing the songs ahead of time, most of them at least, I think probably all of them, and having been familiar with probably the entire Wilco catalog, she had an mm -hmm. idea of what sounds that she wanted to hear on a Wilco record and uh what the mood would be, um, instrumental textures, orchestration, whatever. Um, 
and so that's why I think what sounds a little bit different is that, you know, for my part, she had some very specific ideas about guitar tones and uh, effects or whatnot. And it was fun to try to uh, figure out what it was that would work for her. And yeah. sometimes it was pretty unobvious stuff. Uh, she definitely favors a lot more treble sonically than my than my choices and, interesting uh, and and but that's true of most people <laughs> i realize i'm not much of a travel guy but travel really works for all kinds of music obviously and my job i feel is to make the song sound the way the song wants to sound uh it, whether it's that means uh making sounds that kate likes or that jeff likes or whomever uh that's my job and when I do my own music, then I just do whatever the heck I want. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it was, now, it was fun for me. Now, were there any certain musical touchstones on this album? Or is that something that's like, oh, we want to sound a little bit like this on this record? Like Cruel Country, you knew going in that that was going to be more of a country, you know, no, sort of actually, record, right? No, at all. No. Huh? Really? Uh, we just play Jeff's songs the way they sort of want to sound. And Jeff had written a lot of songs that were, uh, well, he wanted to play acoustic guitar only. Mm -hmm. uh, but he wrote about, uh, I don't know, 50 some songs in one sort of long, slightly over a month long process. Uh, and so the Cruel Country material, which isn't all country style material, but it is uh, instrumentally, I guess, more conservative and was played live for the most part. Um, and Cousin are kind of mostly from the same big batch of songs. But uh, so when we started recording cruel country we weren't uh, jeff wasn't thinking of this as a country record at all they, he just realized at some point that these uh certain of these songs hung together in a certain way and were starting to feel like kind of a country record and so we approached the songs whether they were in a an overt country and western style or whatever uh in a more direct uh and mostly live performance fashion and uh, the current record, Cousin, uh, the imminent record, I should say, yeah, uh, yeah. was more of a layered uh, approach, you know, kind of, uh, which is kind of the way we did uh, Ode to Joy, for example, um, a lot of that. Uh, and, and I think there are certain similarities in my mind to, uh, uh, between Cousin and Ode to Joy in that... Uh, it's that sort of combination uh, that I was speaking of earlier of kind of, you know, accessible, catchy, poignant pop music and really some really dark, moody material and sonic uh, exploration. Yeah. I read this this quote that uh, Kate LeBond said about the band Wilco. She mentioned the amazing thing about Wilco is they can be anything. There's this thread of authenticity that flows through everything they do. There aren't many bands who are able to go this deep into a successful career, successfully changing things up. What do you think of that? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thanks, Kate. I mean, going into... Uh, 2004 Wilco world for me uh, that's kind of what I was thinking about Wilco even without knowing a lot of Wilco music I really only knew Yankee mm -hmm. Hotel Foxtrot well and uh, what was then the upcoming album uh, Ghost is Born and the fact that there was going to be this flexibility this unpredictability um, yet a, a, it's a kind of artistic uh, I guess I don't know I don't like authenticity is not a word that that i would use personally but uh there's going to be a level of artistic consideration over uh commodification if you will um not trying to write hit songs but also you know jeff's a successful songwriter because his music communicates and uh, i think he's very sensitive to what his audience is feeling and thinking and uh he's a success at this uh and so to my mind joining a, a prominent rock band which was not on my agenda at the time uh these considerations or these qualities that kate just uh mentioned there that you quoted were very much on my mind as well so i'd have to just agree and i'd have to say that it kind of comes from the top down i suppose i mean um, jeff is a, a probing and prolific artist and uh we just 
fall in and do our best to make the music come to life and communicate. When you have a band like Wilco, you, you, all you guys have uh, separate things going on. Is it hard to agree on stuff and basically get along? Or does that come easy for you guys? It's really easy. I think it's really easy. You know, I mean, Jeff is definitely the leader. And so mm-hmm. after being in uh, in my earlier life in a couple of what we might term democratic bands, I think it's really important to have a, a leader of some sort. And, um, and it's, you know, it's, uh, I think we all came into Wilco world knowing that Jeff was the leader of the band. So it's not some big mystery. Now, when you first joined Wilco in, in 2004, did you think it would be a gig that would last 19 years? <laughs> uh, certainly not. Oh, I don't think that way, especially. I think a little more that way now that I'm old. I am the oldest guy in the band, so I don't have that much time left. Um, but certainly if you had pulled out the crystal ball uh, and said, you know, flash forward 19 years, Nels, and you'll still be playing with Wilco, and I would have been very, very surprised. Uh, that said, I've done a lot of things musically in my life uh for long stretches, so I'm a little weird that way. To speak to the 19 years with this current lineup, um, we get along, obviously. I don't think I could do it otherwise, because I don't like drama and I don't like uh, disruption, and I'm, I'm pretty non-confrontational for whatever reasons. We don't need to go into that, um, into my psychology. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, uh, but we have a really good time playing together and we have a good time on the road and we know how to stay out of each other's way if somebody needs a little space. And uh, there's a, just a ton of mutual respect. Um, I really consider these gentlemen my brothers. That's a good way of looking at it. So in the 19 years you've been in the band, is there anything that you haven't done yet that you'd like to do in the future with the band, Wilco? Well, I don't know if it matters what I would like to do, but I would think it'd be incredibly fun to make some kind of really insane, almost prog record. Uh, you know, and I don't mean prog like with classical music flourishes, but I mean with, uh, you know, like, like suites with uh, worked out instrumental stretches and weird drama and unexpected musical textures that would really, really freak people out. And, uh, and then challenge the hell out of us, too, you know? I mean, certainly Glenn, for example, has a wide palate and can play anything. Uh, everybody just has a high degree of ability, and a, there are a million instruments in the Wilco loft. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what we could do uh, to try to make some kind of something like like Aphrodite's Child or something, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, or, yeah. or Pado, or, uh, you know, something really rocking, but at the same time really... Uh, like the Yes album or something, like really uh, ambitious and um, maybe startling. I think they need to bring back Glenn's uh, commercial for uh, Kohler Sinks, was it? <laughs> I loved that. That was an <laughs> awesome commercial. Oh, yeah, was faucets. Yeah. Faucets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, that is a very good example of Glenn Kochi being able to do pretty much anything. Uh, yeah, he's he's an octopus, and he's very well-trained and a, a bit of visionary, I might add. Yeah. Well, here's a silly question. What do you think of the term dad rock? Oh, geez. I never had kids, Bill. Uh, yeah. And I am, well, you know, the elder of the band, but it's like, I think it's just such a weird, frustrating term when it's kind of supposed to be belittling or something or in, in some way just trying to like cut you, you guys out unbelittled the, the term, though, I think. Well, well, I guess so. I mean, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I'm just as somebody who never really fit into any particular genre very well, uh, all kinds of like grab bag terms just kind of irritate me. I guess uh, even if I end up using them myself, I, I I kind of wince every once in a while because sure they, they are ne- seemingly necessary at times in order to like explain something, but but it's ultimately limiting and. Uh, I don't know. It's not like we're particularly f- fashionable or young, so maybe we are all dads. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, Several Wilco songs were featured in the Hulu series "The Bear." Now, did you watch the show? I did actually. Uh, it's very rare for me to have seen any current TV show uh, in its entirety, but I made it through the two seasons of "The Bear" and enjoyed it a lot. And I was really 
stunned with how much Wilco music was in it, even though I'd been warned already. And I yeah. thought it was very effectively used also. And I loved the show. Now, did the band have a connection to any of the show's creators? Oh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, I, I think pretty sure that Jeff had some familiarity with the, the gentlemen who are behind it. It's a very Chicago thing. But I don't have any Chicago, you know, karma going way back or anything like that. You know, I just have all my friends in Chicago, yeah. most of whom I've met since I've been in the band. And so sometimes these things are completely unknown to me <laughs> and they're a big yeah. surprise. You know, yeah. I just heard it being talked about. I don't don't recall anybody uh, taking any meetings about it or anything, but maybe Jeff did. It, it feels very Chicago, and, and I'm one who was a line cook before I was doing this, and, and I, so I can relate to it, and I thought the show was great, and it was so cool to hear the, the Wilco songs in it, and the, they really you know had a lot of cool songs featured in the show, which, the, was, the which musical, was pretty awesome. Yeah, the musical direction, supervision, whatever, was really, really uh, top-notch, and I found the show uh, extremely involving. And, uh, and, you know, my wife and I were pretty into food, so things that are food related uh, they generally are of interest so they kind of snag me yeah i don't know going from a sandwich shop to a you know a, a five-star restaurant was kind of of a unique turn of events i thought too <laughs> yeah and it's like i'd hesitate to say cuisine but that early iteration of chicago cuisine would be certainly not known to me and not appealing so uh, but I'm fascinated by all that kind of stuff, too. So I learned some things. Something I want to know about you. You've been playing guitar forever. How did you, what first caused you to, to pick up a guitar? What was the first thing that uh, did you? Well, um, it was probably the birds. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, I think I heard the birds in 65 or 66. Uh, my brother, Alex, my identical twin brother, uh, is also a musician. He became obsessed with the Rolling Stones. And then from then on, it became, uh, you know, 60s, late 60s rock and roll. And uh, and for me, very importantly, uh, and not related to picking up the guitar, I suppose, uh, Indian classical music, so-called, Ravi Shankar specifically was the first artist that I heard. Um, and so 60s uh, psychedelia, the counterculture, Indian music, and the blues sort of fueled my desire to play electric guitar. And Jimi yeah. Hendrix really sort of drove it home for me, and that was when I decided to play guitar, if I could, for the rest of my life. And that was when I was 12. So Jimi Hendrix is probably your, is he your favorite all-time guitar player? Well, I certainly has the most powerful sway over my uh, early life, and as such, he was the catalyst. You know, but the list of guitarists I admire is in the hundreds. It's Nels Klein, guitarist in the band Wilco. The new album is called Cousin, and it's due on the 29th of September. So nice chatting with you. Good luck to you, and hope to see Wilco here in the Twin Cities very soon. Thank you, Bill. I love the Twin Cities, and I'm dying to get back there. So uh, maybe I'll just talk to the powers that be and start trying to throw my weight around. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good idea. All, all right. right. Cheers. All right. All the best, Bill. Thank mm -hmm. you. Cheers. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.